Hey there, it's Mark from Mark's Astro Journey. In this imaging session, I'm targeting the Great Cluster in Hercules. It's also known as Messier 13, and it's in the constellation Hercules, as is obvious from the, the name, right? It's a globular cluster, and it's said to be, from the different sources, about 25,000 light years away. Here's the target in Stellarium, the great star cluster in Hercules. And here in SharpCap, I'm going to do a plate solve and allow the mount to get aligned to the target better. It did an adjustment of 0.14 degrees. I'm going to take the exposure time up to two minutes initially. Some sources also say that it's a 12 billion year old relic from the formation of our galaxy. It would be interesting to hear how they came to those conclusions, but it would be something interesting to research a little. So I'm going to kick off the guiding here, get that started so we can see how the guiding is going to look. So back in sharp cap, just going to take a quick look to see that our target is aligned well and it looks good. And also to check the histogram, see how that's looking before we start an imaging session. Guiding seems to have somewhat settled down. Messier 13 was discovered by Haley in 1714 and then later on it was cataloged by Messier in 1764. So I'm going to kick off a session here, just double check, capture area, fits, raw 16, okay. We'll go for two hours. In this imaging session I'm using my Skywatcher 100 ED APO refractor and I have a GEM28 Ioptron mount. I also have a ZWO camera. So now that the light frame session is finished, I'm going to capture my darks. I put the end cap on the telescope. I'm going to leave the exposure and gain and everything else the same. And I'm going to do 20 uh, dark frames. And here we can see the dark frames wrapping up. Kind of facing an interesting challenge this summer. There's there are a lot of wildfires in Canada and those wildfires they say there's like something like 500 of them burning and all that smoke is basically wrapping around different weather systems and coming down into the US so I'm in Indiana and most of the last several weeks we've had smoke some days you can actually see the smoke in the air but it's not nearly as bad as it is up north Time to capture our flat frames, so I'll put the light panel on. I'm going to change the exposure time to a brief exposure and adjust the gain as well to get a proper histogram for flats. With a couple adjustments, I should be able to get this between around 25 and 30 percent on the histogram. So now that I have this where I want it, I'm going to capture 200 flats. Messier 13 is one of over 100 globular clusters that rotate around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So here in AstroPixel Processor, I'll select my light, flat, bias, and dark frames. And then I'll kick off the Analyze, which includes the calibration. Comparing the stars in Messier 13 to the stars in the neighborhood of our sun, the sources say that they're like 100, 100 times more densely packed and that they're so close together that they sometimes collide and end up forming new stars. Once the analyze is done in Astro Pixel Processor, then you can, if you want to look at the quality of the frames you captured, it gives you statistics on those. You could manually go and remove frames if you don't want to keep some of them. Or you could use the um, rejection parameters on the integrate portion and just l allow Astro Pixel Processor to reject the pixels um, that are out of certain thresholds. The brightest star in the cluster is a red giant known as V11. It's a variable star. So once we kick off this integrate step, it's going to include the registration and normalization and then the integration to do the stacking. I don't personally believe in extraterrestrials, but the articles say that in 1974 the Arecibo message was directed at Messier 13 and they sent like human DNA and other information and of course I think the idea is P 
people who believe there might be, you know, extraterrestrial intelligent life. They're thinking that, you know, by contacting a nearby so densely packed globular cluster that there might be a good likelihood someone would hear and receive the message. But what's interesting is, if it was sent in 1974, it makes you wonder. They pointed it at Messier 13, but with such a great distance, 25,000 light years, would it hit the target by the time it got there? I don't know how they directed the message or how they projected like where Messier 13 would be by the time the message arrived. It was kind of an interesting fact. So I skipped forward towards the end of the integration and here you can see that it uh, applies the rejection parameters um, on the pixels and then it's going to do the integration of all the pixels together to produce the final stacked image. This globular cluster has something between 100,000 and 500,000 stars and they're packed into a space of about 150,000 light years. I usually make a few minor adjustments to, um, you know, like black point, um, the gamma correction and saturation in AstroPixel processor before saving the image. And then just take a quick peek at the image um, at the file system level afterwards. Since this is just a star cluster without any nebula involved, I probably will only just do a little more post-processing in GIMP. So in this imaging session, I spent about two hours capturing the light frames and then of course the additional time to capture um, flat or dark frames and flat frames and bias. Here in GIMP I'm just going to make a few adjustments to things like brightness, contrast, black level, exposure, and chroma and then I will export this to several image formats. So I was reading an article that this month of July in 2023, Venus will be in crescent form. And so I thought I would try, I don't know if the weather is going to cooperate with the smoke from Canada and the rainy weather. We've had a lot of rainy weather here in Indiana for about the last two or three weeks. It's felt like spring, but it's summer. And so, but I thought I would try if I can get an opportunity in the day to go out and try to capture some images of Venus because the article suggests that if you're trying to catch the crescent, uh, you know, images of Venus, it's a lot easier to do it in the daytime due to um, the lighting and how bright Venus usually is. So if I get a chance, I'm gonna see what I can do with that. And you might see a video coming out for me to show the results of that. And here's a quick look at the image after post-processing with GIMP, and I'm going to stop there. I hope you enjoyed this imaging session. If you did, uh, please leave comments, give me a thumbs up, and also if you enjoy these type of videos, I would encourage you to subscribe Anyone trying to build a YouTube channel has discovered that it's kind of a slow process and you have to have so many subscribers to really get rolling. So if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications and you'll notice any new videos that I publish. Clear skies.